What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBaz.com, bringing you a deep dive of the 2022 Volkswagen Golf GTI. We have a full review of this car where we dive into the big issue with this particular car, which is the technology over on our channel. If you want to watch that, the link is included in the description below, but it would really help if you liked this video, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos, like the one I just mentioned. And if you want to read more more about the Golf GTI, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. So now let's get into the new Golf GTI. We're going to talk about all the things that I love and all the things that I don't love about this car, starting with what I love, the styling. Volkswagen does not like to change up the GTI formula too much. It looked basically the same since like the Mark V. They've done like little modern changes, but this one I think is the most aggressive we've seen ever. We've got these really aggressive, sharp headlines that I think look great. We've got a much thinner grille than we used to have on this upper portion. Still have our nice GTI logo with the red stripe. It's a little bit hard to see because we have a red car. We've got the new Volkswagen emblem, which is a little bit more modern than the one it replaces. And then on the lower fascia, we still have the honeycomb, although they've designed it in a much different way. And you may notice these fog lights. You can see there are these five um, hexagonal dots, which is really cool. Very alien looking. I think the front end looks great. You might think it's a little bit too aggressive, but I'm a huge fan of the styling. I'm also a fan of this Aurora red color on the GTI. It's a much different red than you used to get on GTIs, which was more of like a flat orangey red. I think it looks great, much more premium and much more adult than it used to look. We've got these 19 inch wheels. Those are optional. You're gonna get 18s on the base GTI. As I mentioned, we have the Autobahn trim level. This is the top trim of the GTI. Um, there's an S, SE, and Autobahn, and I'll talk a little bit about the differences between those. I'm not a huge fan of the wheel pattern. I don't like these directional wheels. GTIs have had much better wheels to me in the past. I like the roto dials that you used to be able to get on the Mark V. Those are my favorite, but you can swap those out pretty easily. You'll notice that this is a five door model, so we do have full rear doors here. You used to be able to get the Golf GTI as a two-door or a three-door because it's a hatchback, but you haven't been able to for a few years now. So this is not really a big loss that Volkswagen got rid of that option. Now here in the back, the GTI is a hatchback. If you want a sedan, you're going to have to get the Jetta GLI, which is still in the seventh generation. This is an eighth generation Volkswagen product. So that's one area where the GTI is going to be a little bit better than the Jetta GLI, although it's more expensive. We'll talk about that. We've got our GTI low logo here underneath the Volkswagen logo, which also doubles as the way we open up this rear hatch. So you just click that, open it up. You'll see we have plenty of room here for all of our cargo. Uh, I think the Jetta's trunk is a little bit deeper and further, but of course the GTI is a hatchback, meaning that you have much more vertical space this way and you can fold those seats down to get a ton of room uh, when you combine all of that. Let's go ahead and check out the back seats as well. I mentioned that this has doors back here to make it pretty easy to get in and out of. The leg room is just fine. I don't have that much space here, um, but you'll get more space on the Jetta. So if you value value passenger space more than cargo space. Maybe you'll be better off with the GLI versus the GTI, but headroom is quite good. And I do have heated seats back here and my own ventilation controls, which is quite nice. You also, if you want to come zoom in here, we have these nice little leather pockets where I can go ahead and stick my phone. That's kind of a nice touch. I mean, heated seats on a car um, that's like this basic, you know, at this price is pretty nice. And I do have USB C's down here uh, to charge up my devices. All of the USB ports in this car actually happen to be USB. USB-C, not regular USB, which is a little bit weird. So now I'm gonna take you on a first person view. So I'm gonna grab the camera. Thank you, Austin, very much. And we're gonna take you on a first person tour of the front seat here, starting with these seats. The GTI has always had really cool seats. Um, these are no exception. They look great. Honestly, these would not look play out of place in a Porsche 911. That's how good they look. The one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is I think there's too many colors going on. You see, we have this gray, we've got the black, we've got red stitching with red piping, and then we have some red accents there on the side. It's just a lot. And if you get certain colors on the exterior of this car, like blue or yellow, it really doesn't look good with this interior. Unfortunately, if you get the leather seats, which is standard on the Autobahn trim level, this is the only color combination you can get. There's no other option for that. If you get the base S or the SE without the leather option, you get the plaid tartan seats 
that's how I would get a GTI. And for more than just the seats, there's more than just that, uh, which is why I would get the, pl I love plaid more than I like leather. Although I should mention these are heated and ventilated. You only get heated seats if you get the cloth. You also get a power seat here on the driver's side. The passenger seat is only partial automatic for the back, and then you have to slide forward and backwards. And you also get memory seats. You get three different memory functions um, that the car will remember, which is quite nice. So the seats are great. You can see they have all these bolstering. One of my favorite features about the car. But now we are gonna start to talk about one of the things I absolutely hate about the GTI and that is the touch controls. So you can see down here, we have our stop start button. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. This little wizard's wand, almost like what you get in the Porsche 911 actually, is the controls for the seven speed dual clutch DSG. Um, so that's a dual clutch transmission, automatic. You know, you have paddle shifters here on the wheel. You can still get the GTI with a six speed manual, which is kind of nice. I haven't driven it, um, but I think the DSG is probably the better option. It's been in the GTI, the better option for quite a while now. Uh, down here, I'll show you the cup holders. Um, so this is a cup holder right Right here and then if you want your second one you just click this button and then this little part is going to fold out now you have two cup holders kind of interesting but now let's talk about the big issue that i have with the golf gti and that is this infotainment system so we've got this nice i believe it's a 10 inch screen um it's fine, the responsiveness, you can see it's kind of sluggish switching from menu to menu. Come on, there you go. So when you first start it up, it's a little bit laggy. It gets a little bit better uh, if you leave it for a little bit longer, but you'll see there are no buttons and no knobs surrounding it. So everything you do has to be done on this screen. So for example, to change the climate control, there's no knob. You have to click this button right here that reads Clima. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and that's going to pull up this menu for my climate controls. I'm going to go ahead and focus on that. Now I can control the fan speed up or down on the screen. That's really annoying because you have to pull this up every time. So if you're on your navigation or your audio menu or something, every time you're going to have to leave it to go to this climate control and then you're going to have to back out. To do things like your heated seats, um, you have to come to this menu. So click that. Now I can activate my heated and ventilated seats. As I mentioned, it has both, which is kind of nice. And you can actually use them at the same time, which is great. Now there is a touch slider here so I can raise the volume like this up or down, but that doesn't work for the fan speed and I can change the temperature temperature controls on these as well, but they're kind of finicky and you can't really see how much you're adjusting it without looking, which I think is really distracting. Now, what you can do is you can put two fingers on this and that'll activate your heated seat, but it doesn't work for the ventilated seat, which is a little bit annoying. Um, now you can voice control some of this stuff. So I can say, Hey, Volkswagen. Sometimes it listens, sometimes it doesn't. Hey, Volkswagen turn on my ventilated seat. Will it do it? All right. There we go. So you can do that, which is fine, I guess, but if you're listening to music or a podcast, you don't want to be doing it with voice command all the time. Um, I should mention that this menu is customizable. Um, so if you want like Apple CarPlay up at the top, or maybe you don't use it that often, you can arrange it like a smartphone, which I think is pretty nice design. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to make things easier. Those are wireless as well, which is quite nice. Um, we do have this cool uh, ambient lighting. You can change it lights up really pretty at night. We have all these different colors that you can choose from, or you can even set your own custom color. And when you do that, it's going to change the color that you get in the gauge cluster as well. I'm sorry if the video skipped out a little bit there. I accidentally hit pause on the recorder, but you'll see. So now we have orange. There we have like a nice teal. There we have blue. There we have red, yellow. And I set the custom color to purple, which is quite cool. Um, I really like this gauge, by the way. You'll see that we're in the sport setting right now, um, which has this big uh, tachometer there in the middle, uh, which is awesome. I love having the tack in the middle like that. But if you click this little button on the steering wheel that says view, you can change up how this looks. Um, so you can have it be just normal gauges. That's what it normally looks like. You can have it be a little bit more basic. So you can have your full color map, which is nice while you're navigating. I really like that function. This is, I don't even know what this screen is. I think this is like your driving assist functions. That's just your speed, which is kind of redundant, which is why I tend to leave it on the sport gauge because I think that is the nicest way to have it. So on the steering wheel, we also have more touch capacitive buttons with this 
gloss black. You get fingerprint smudges all over it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, you can actually like click these buttons and you can use that to control like what's on the gauge cluster there, but it's kind of annoying to use. It's a bit like a Mercedes system. It's just not as responsive as having normal buttons. I wish they would have just put normal physical buttons because there was nothing wrong with any of that. So that's my biggest problem with the GTI is the technology. But the other issue is some of the stuff like the steering wheel and the seats are very premium, but other stuff feels like they cheaped out a little bit. So this material doesn't feel as nice as the old GTI. This dashboard is a little bit hard and scratchy as well. It just feels like a less premium product than the outgoing GTI, which really almost felt like an Audi cabin. All right, so now I'm gonna get the GTI out on the road because this is the thing I like the most about this car. All of the pain in the butt stuff with the technology and the touch buttons, that all just fades away when you just drive this car. We've got the EA 888 engine, two liter, four cylinder turbocharged driving the front wheels. As I mentioned, seven speed dual clutch transmission. It drives so well. The steering is so sharp. We've got good ride comfort here. I think that the engine even sounds better than it did before. Let me go ahead and put it into manual mode so we can hear it. Ooh, it does a little bit of fart on the upshift with the DSG. Volkswagen's DSG transmission is one of the best affordable dual clutches that you can get. There's really nothing at this price that I think shifts as smoothly and as comfortably as this. And we do have some drive modes here. So you can see we have this mode button right here. That's gonna pull up this menu where you can go from eco, comfort, or sport. I've been putting it in custom mode, which I think the custom mode is really cool. So you can set your steering, drivetrain, engine sound, all of that stuff like you can in a lot of other cars, but this is your dynamic chassis control. So this car has adaptive dampers. Look at how many settings you get on this. So you have comfort and sport, but then you have more than sport and more than comfort. I've actually left it in comfort mode. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in sport mode though, because the one thing that I don't love about this car, it is very comfortable um, when you have it in comfort mode, but if you put it in that stiffest setting, it starts to get a little bit too brutal. So the road we're about to go on here has some pretty torn up road so you should see what I'm talking about here let's go ahead and hit it not a lot of torque steer we're gonna have to hit our brakes but we're about to go over some bumps not too bad it's it's firm but I still think that the GTI is a more comfortable car than Hyundai's N models you know the Veloster N and the Elantra N those are so stiff and so brutal I think even in the stiffest setting this GTI is still a little bit more comfortable. But even the excellent driving is not without one or two silly issues. For example, turning off the traction control, I've never had a car be more difficult than this. It literally took me a half hour to figure out. So to turn off the traction control, you have to go to vehicle, okay? And then it's gonna wait, 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 there you go. Okay, so under exterior, it's under brakes for some reason. Now I can go from activated, so traction control off, there's like a sport setting, or I can go fully off. Um, so the sport and off settings are the only way where you're going to get launch control because I wanted to show you how that works. It's a very weird launch control system. It's very easy to use. So foot on the brake, foot on the gas, launch active, let's go. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, it has traction. Listen, it results in a very quick launch. I think this car will hit 60 miles an hour in like 5.1 seconds, which is great for a front wheel drive car, but it's just really weird how it just cuts time, cuts time, cuts time. And then finally, as it deems it has enough traction, then it finally feels like you're actually going somewhere. It's very undramatic. I think that if you're gonna spend this much on a GTI, because this Autobahn trim with the leather and the DSG that I've shown you is about 40, thousand dollars that means it's about five thousand dollars more than an elantra n or a veloster n which i think are much better values now you can get the golf gti se which is about 34 35 thousand dollars i think that's a better value or the base s trim which is about thirty thousand dollars but if you're gonna spend 40 grand like you would on this Autobahn trim level, you might as well get the Golf R. You go from 240 to 315 horsepower, you get all wheel drive, you get a drift mode, and you get to say that I own a Golf R. So in my personal opinion, 
I would either go for a lower trim GTI or I would just get the Golf R. But because of all of this stuff that I showed you, these annoying touch buttons, I honestly don't think I'd buy either of them. As of right now, I still think that Hyundai is the king of hot hatchbacks. We really hope you've enjoyed this deep dive of the 2022 Volkswagen Golf GTI. For more videos like it, be sure to smash the like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.